Well, good morning to everyone again. And first, I want to thank the organizer for this very intriguing um, workshop. And I want to say that this is a very preliminary presentation of some of the first suggestions that I have, just thinking about the connection that the Mediterranean can create in a very specific uh, period. In fact, the Mediterranean Sea now and in the past represents a strength of connections and interactions. Peoples who lived close to the shoreline absorbed the, con the constant flow of ideas at different levels. In the present paper, I selected one case study to deep analyze the implication of maritime uh, contact sorry, played during a specific period and region. The case study I selected is the early Bronze Age in Southern Levant. During this period, the area underwent to a parabolic development of the urban society. In fact, at the beginning of the early Bronze Age I period, around 3700 BC, the process of urbanization took place all over the region, and it lasted at the middle of the third millennium BC, when a general retraction of the urbanization began and went to an end only at the beginning of the second millennium BC, in a period called early Bronze Age I I. Nowadays, it is generally accepted that the causes of such process have to be found mainly inside the society under study. Nevertheless, it is interesting to look also at the several impulses that this society received from the neighboring regions. This is the subject of several studies that have taken into consideration the different regions and periods. The contacts between the Levant and Egypt represent a well-debated subject. In fact, in the, first imported, the first imported elements found in Egypt are dated to the very beginning of the 1st millennium BC, attributed to the Chalcolithic horizon, and are mainly related to the circulation of copper objects. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, here I put uh, also an images of uh, some uh, probably cultic figurines uh, that can be um, uh, this, the, the, test, the, the, well, the evidence of this type of contacts also in a symbolic way. During the early Bronze Age I, new economic impulses created new trade roads for the first time. It is possible to speak about maritime connection. The coastal sites along the shorelines are now characterized by the presence of imported elements, among which there are tabular scraper, pottery vessels related to consumption and luxury goods. This new trade road along the shore continued developing during the EB2 um, and the beginning of the EB3. Only at the beginning of the EB4, when the urban development in Southern Levant underwent an interruption, also the evidences of contact between the two regions seems to interrupt. At the same time, new interconnection now linked the Egypt with the Lebanese and Syrian coast. The aim of the present research is to look at the evidences of connection between coastal sites in a wider region, trying to define the nature of maritime connections that characterize the Eastern Mediterranean Sea during the 1st and 3rd millennium BC. In the present paper, I decided to focus the attention on pottery because I believe that the creation and diffusion of ceramic vessels provide information regarding three aspects of the social life. On the one hand, the quantitative and special analysis of shapes indicate social practices of food behave, from the storing to cooking and, consum and consuming of solid and liquids. Secondly, the recurrence of specific decorations or styles gives information regarding the fashion and the preferences expressed by people. Finally, the sharing of particular ways of doing in a wider area strongly determined the circulation of shared working practices. For this preliminary analysis, some case studies have been taken into consideration. Looking at the link between Southern Levant and Egypt, first it is important to remember that the new accurate C14 analysis in both regions allowed more secure chronological correlation uh, between the two. As we have seen, the connection between these two regions is strong, is strong since the first millennium BC. Several imported vessels um, okay. Several imported vessels um, sorry, okay. from the Delta to the Levantine coast and vice versa testified by petrographic as well as autoptic analysis. 
In some cases, the presence of proper Egyptian colonies dated back to the EB1A have been proposed by several scholars. Uh, so focusing on Southern Levant, Levant, Brown distinguished between imported ceramic objects and Egyptianized objects, which means Egyptian morphology fashioned of extremely coarse fabric with a significant quantity of vegetal inclusions. Among the imported vessels, he mentioned the fine ware ceramic bottles and cylindrical vessels, the wine jars, the lentiloid-shaped bottles, and the baking bowls. These types of vessels are particularly common in a lot of sites um, located along the South Levant shoreline, such as Tellerani and Besor and Amasia. The Egyptianized objects are baking trays, like bread molds, lotus bowls, granary jars. Brown suggested an analytic food waste associated with at least some elements of the late EB1 population in Southern Levant, and this idea is supported also by the Sambulle with Egyptian style. Looking at the type of imported vessels, most of which are uh, small bottles, it is also possible to suggest a link with the exchange of oils or fine exotic perfumes imported from Egypt, while food production is more related to locally produced vessels with Egyptian fashion. Also, Tashkilan, uh, return, also, Ashkelon returned evidences of Egyptianized objects locally made and Egyptian imported objects. Moreover, there are evidences of Nile perch and Nilotic shells, as well as traces of wood from Lebanon, that testify the presence of a net of commercial interaction related to the site. Well, um, sorry. what about um, Egypt and Egyptian connection? Looking at the materials from Bhutto in the Delta region, Mazinska recognized a typical Southern Levantine pottery dated to the late Calcolithic and EB1. In particular, thin wood pottery with sand temper with painted or impressed decoration was found dated to Bhutto phase 1st A, rather corresponding to Levantine late Calcolithic phase. This repertoire can be considered of Southern Levantine origin both for fabric, form, and decoration. During the following phase 1b and 2nd, dated to the EB1 in Southern Levant, locally made vessels with stylistic link and mixture of organic temper became increasingly common, while the use of turning devices typical for the Levantine production decreased. This development of Bhutto Levantine pottery was interpreted by Falting in 2002 with the idea of Levantine immigrant groups that arrived at Bhutto during the final phase of the late Calcolithic period and gradually developed a form of adaptation visible to the production of hybrid ceramic vessels. Nevertheless, it is interesting to note that the range of shapes changed between the two periods. In fact, the Bhutto first day Levantine shapes are represented by V-shaped bows, fenestrated bows, and the typical P cross rim. They indicate a particular attention on the morphology. On the contrary, during the first B second phase in Bhutto, the Levantine pottery is represented by old mouth jars, storage jars with white painted bands, jars with cylindrical neck, simple rim, and oval body, with cream-colored surface and quartz temper made with imported clay, as demonstrated by petrographic analysis. Flat bases of medium-sized uh, jar with crushed cones as temper. Moreover, handles and knobs typical of jars are also attested. Similar range of shapes is known also from the site of Mahadi, Eliopolis, and Minshat. Such a new... Um, range of shapes testify new needs that have to be associated to exchange of goods. For this reason, it is difficult to believe that the same group of, group of people that arrived at the very end of the late Calcolithic changed the range of shapes that remembers their origin. It is more probable that the pottery vessels of the um, vessels dated to the first A phase at Bhutto represents imported goods related to exchange of exotic style. Uh, prove the possible absence of a group of people that moved from the Southern Levant to Delta. To understand what happened 
um, during the EB1 relevant is the petrographic analysis conducted by Para on a wide sample from Bhutto. Among others, she recognized a local pottery production with southern Levantine morphology, tempered with some elements that make the color of the fabric similar to that of the Levantine vessels, so creamy and orange. Moreover, <coughs> five samples have proved to be Canaanite imports, being made with calcareous clay and tempered with the well-sorted sand quartz and calcite. The presence of crushed limestone and calcite as tempered in Nile clay is also attested in Mahadi and Heliopolis. The change in the way of production of some specific jars should be interpreted with particular needs. This evidence suggests the presence of a group of so-called immigrants from the southern Levant that moved to the Delta and continue to produce vessels, and in particular jars, with their technical knowledge, even if they found easier to use the local clay. Um, about Lebanon during the early Bronze Age I, the archaeological evidence is dated to the 1st and 3rd millennium BC are scanty and scattered in the archaeological deposits usually covered by impressive monumental architecture dated to the later period. Nevertheless, EB occupational levels are attested at Sidon, Telfadus Parabida, Biblos, and Telarca. In these sites, the pottery repertoire shows a strong link between this area and southern Levantine coast. In some cases, also Egyptian ceramic shares can provide information regarding extension of Egyptian influence along the shoreline. Now, looking at the following stage of the early Bronze Age 2 and 3, I decided to focus on a particular case study that is the so-called metallic combat ware. This production is well described by the recent work related to the Archaean project uh, in the first international series related to pottery. As highlighted by Talman and Soda, the definition of Levantine combat ware is applied to a wide repertoire of medium-sized jars, high-fired, characterized by an intense combing of the wall surface. It is generally accepted that this ware was produced exclusively in the coastal area of the Levant and had a limited diffusion northward in the Amuk regions as well as in the hinterland of Syria. Associated materials were found also in the elite tombs from the 4th and 6th dynasties. From a chronological point of view, this ware is attributed to the AD 2 3 context with an end dated circa um, during the 2500 BC by new C14 calibrated date from Southern Levant. Unfortunately, the lack of petrographic analysis impacts the de determination of the fabric, the origin of the clay and the nature of the temper. Nevertheless, the accurate typological distinction proposed for the Arcane project uh, is worthy of note. It is based on both morphology of the vessels, way of combing, and capacity. The results show the presence of three distinct <coughs> groups located in Egypt, Southern Levant, and Northern Levant. Strong similarity in the fashion of the vessels and their common function as uh, storage and transportation vessels from solid and food, uh, solid food and liquids testify exchanges of idea of the type related to the same function. The differences in the way of production can be under to understand in a local organization of the manufacture. Yes. To conclude um, and summarize the, the data here described, again, I want to highlight the very preliminary character of this type of analysis. The attention on pottery production can help in better define the different ways of interconnection between neighboring as well as distant regions. The contact between the Mediterranean coast during the war third millennium BC are proved by the presence of strong parallels in, uh, that can be found in the pottery repertoire. Nevertheless, the multiple character of such parallels suggests a high variety of connections and a more complicated net of inter, uh, interrelation between people uh, how, and how they lived along the eastern Mediterranean coast. Um, I want to say that probably more uh, attention and more data in the whole shine operatoire of the vessel of the ceramic production can uh, also provide new uh, and interesting data, especially in the way the potter shaped the vessel, that it would be, from my opinion, the next step that we have to consider. And thank you for your attention.